but residents here know they do live in a dangerous place, and the war could come here. For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm. But now that I'm looking back at it and looking at the way it all came down and the influence of NATO and so forth, it's uh, it's very disturbing. Yeah, the worst thing about it is just the, I didn't really, well, kind of complicated. I remember uh, writing to a friend who was in Zagreb or in the Zagreb area and um, uh, mentioning to her that... Uh, I had, was having this dream that I would have every few weeks, uh, and in my dream, I would be getting in my car and driving just a few miles down the road to a place that was like Bosnia, right? They, it, where there were the houses were all down and burned, and people were all dead, you know. And I kept dreaming it over and over again. Um, and now that I have a bigger picture, I think, of the world and what's going on, it seems like America really is trotting down almost exactly the same path that Yugoslavia went down in the 70s and the 80s. And um, there are already there are already so many historical similarities between the two countries. It's just horrifying to think. I mean, it's scary. I don't used to. It was. I mean, back in the in the 90s, one of the first things I learned how to say when I learned to speak Croatian was "Amerikari uh, 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 is which means America is boring. That was going to be my answer. If anybody had a, a question for me as to why I was why I was in Croatia or Bosnia, that was going to be my first answer, and it was true. I was bored. I thought those drive-by shootings and gang warfare and stuff like that was not very interesting. It was, you know, pretty safe, you know, where I lived. Um, that was the worst that you had to worry about. Places where entire towns were burning down, that's, that was interesting to me, and I wanted to see it. And um, it, was, it was exciting, you know, and I, I was full of life, you know, uh, when I was over there. It was like it was like I just sprang to life, and I would be depressed when I would get back. Now it's the other way around. It's like, no, no, I don't want to ever see this again. You know, please don't. You know, there's got to be one safe place that people can go. But really, you know, in, in, in America, yes, you know, there are safer places and more dangerous places. But I have this fear of uh, this kind of thing, you know, enveloping the whole nation, just like it enveloped almost all of Yugoslavia. And really, that's a real good uh, comparison, because Yugoslavia was sort of a hodgepodge country of different cultures that were all sort of glued together by this government, uh, you know, and a map that was drawn by dignitaries in a different country and just imposed upon people. But But yet they were still for... Almost a century they held together as one country, and then it just seemed like, you know, at least from looking at it from the outside, it seemed like overnight that thing, that that that, uh, that imaginary binding that held them vanished, and all the groups fell apart. But really, the truth is, there were people in there trying to break that apart and trying to be free uh, long before most of the world took notice of the uh, of the struggle. Yeah, I mean, Croats had been, you know, they felt completely uh, undermined by Belgrade for the entirety of their involvement in Yugoslavia, you know, even before World War II. Um, and, th and their rebellion against Belgrade was so extreme that when they had a chance to rebel, they did it by just butchering every Serb they could find. And not every Croat did that, of course, but, um, but, the, but, the, but the, the, the desire for independence was that strong. And um, the, the the real thing that made it happen, though, was not the Croatian separatists. It was the uh, it was just the fact that the central government in Belgrade kept overplaying its hand and just acting as though they could just pretty much do anything they want. And well, well really, I mean, it's much more complicated than that because it really, as I think about it, you know, Milosevic didn't he didn't do he didn't he, he was a cagey player and he didn't overplay his hand at every occasion. There were various points in time where he would uh, put, pick what would be considered a more cautious approach, you know, toward getting what he wanted. Uh, he was nothing like the current United States federal government in the sense that it doesn't even think twice about anything that it does. It's like there's no caution 
that's ever crossed the mind of anyone that's in Washington now. Medjugorje residents list only a few attacks in the town since the war began. Most of these were unsuccessful air raids that resulted in only one casualty. The cow's name hasn't been released yet. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.lrn.fm. That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.